Hi, my name is Jesse Kitchmanian. I'm a senior at the College of Staten Island, currently studying mechanical engineering. And I'm also currently taking the Applied Mechanics Laboratory with Professor Haber. This class is typically structured in an in-class environment, though due to unprecedented circumstances, this course has moved online for this semester. And in this video, I want to talk to you about finite element analysis, why it's important, a brief rundown on how it works, and how you can simulate your own finite element analysis problem in a software known as Fusion 360. So as a quick run through of what finite element analysis actually is, I sort of put together this brief PowerPoint just to describe everything in two slides. So finite element analysis is very, very important for real world structural analysis problems and not just simulations. And it's practically a necessity before any material is ordered, let alone assembled or consumed, as engineers always want to save as much money as possible. Most finite element analysis softwares can analyze a slew of different problems, some being fluid dynamics, heat transfer, mechanics of solids, and practically many, many other physics-based problems. Popular FEA softwares, and FEA is just an acronym for finite element analysis, include Autodesk, Comsol, and ANSYS. And learning these softwares can aid you in future mechanical engineering career options. Now, as a quick understanding of how finite element analysis can actually calculate all these parameters is by a topic known as meshing. And in essence, meshing is the breaking down of an object into much smaller sections that can then be calculated individually. This then allows the computer to use its machine learning or its algorithms in order to add the sections together and average them in order to give the user the output that they anticipate, whether it be displacement or stress or any other physics-based parameter. So the specific thing that we're going to be designing today and simulating is a cantilever beam with one load at the end and we can symbolize this by just putting a beam going out with a single force F and we can denote this point as point A and denote this point as point B. Now we're also going to say that the length of this beam is just L. Since we don't want to use any real numbers for this example, we're just doing this all theoretically. What we could do very quickly is draw a internal force and moment diagram. So we're going to do the internal force up here and the internal or the moment diagram down here. So as we could see very quickly, the internal force for this is indeed going to be just F. So we can say F and we can shade this in. And the moment is going to be a linear line from zero maxing out at F times L. And we'll shade this in as well. Now, since we're not going to be solving every single parameter for this, let's just take a look specifically at stress, more specifically the bending stress. Now, the formula for bending stress is Y times M over I, and the Y is the distance to the point from the neutral axis, the M is the bending moment, and the I is the moment of inertia. So theoretically, looking at this formula here, we can infer that the maximum stress is going to occur where the moment is maximum or where the beam is meeting the wall. So knowing that, we can jump into Fusion 360 now, create our structure, simulate it, and check the stress to make sure that it matches up what we anticipate with this design. And you could be more specific and use real numbers in order to get a more accurate assessment and make sure that the stresses match up precisely, but we're not going to be doing that for this. So now let's just jump on over to Fusion 360. So when you start Fusion 360 for the first time, you're going to notice that you just have a blank slate here. So we're going to start this off by moving over to the right section over here, creating a new sketch and putting our sketch on this plane. So we're going to do now is first actually make sure that our units are what we want them to be. And in my case, I want them to be inches. We're going to press OK and we're going to create a two point rectangle that's 12 inches long, 12 inches wide. And just like that, we have a one foot by one foot rectangle. Now what we're going to do with this rectangle is we're going to extrude it. So we're going to finish the sketch over here, press the E hotkey to extrude. We're going to make sure that this rectangle is selected and we're going to extrude it just a half inch as our wall. And we're going to change this into a new component. Now the new component is going to pop up over here. We can just rename this to wall. And next what we're going to do is make one more sketch along the plane of the wall now. And we're going to do a two point rectangle again. And we're just going to arbitrarily place a rectangle here. We're not worried about area in this case where we're not actually solving, comparing it to our handwritten work. So just arbitrarily put a point there, finish the sketch, and you can also extrude this out 
let's say 16 inches, and we want the operation to be also a new component. So we can call this beam. Now what we're going to do now is move this beam out of the way, and we want to join the beam to the wall. So we're going to go to assemble, we're going to click on joint, and we're going to make sure that it's set to rigid first, and select the component. So we're going to select the center of this component, as well as the center of this component. And it's going to join them together. And you can tell that it's joined rigidly because of the motion here. If we were to pick something like Revolut, you would be able to see what's going on there. But we want rigid. So we're going to press OK. And that's basically it for the design. So now that we have our cantilever beam set up, we can head on over to the simulation section. In the simulation section, we're going to go ahead and choose static stress. And we have our wall set up here. So first thing you're going to notice is this big X over here. And that's just a pre-check. Before you can actually solve the structure, you need to make sure that everything is set up the way you want it. So the first thing you're going to do is check out the materials. Now, the materials we have set as steel, we're going to keep it as steel, but you can go ahead and change this to any material that you want to work with. Next is to set up our constraints. And we're just going to set a fixed constraint over here since this is technically connected to the wall or this is the wall, so it's it's a fixed point. And finally, we're going to go ahead and pick loads and place a load right at the edge here at negative 10,000 newtons, for example. And the negative is just for direction, so it can go downwards. And we're going to press OK. Now, the pre-check still has a problem, and that's because we set this up to be a rigid point, but it just wants to make sure. So we're going to click on Automatic Contacts, set a tolerance of 0.1 millimeters, and click Generate. And you can tell that the pre-check is finished now. There's one more thing we can do, and it's the meshing. So just to visualize what's going on here, let's click Generate Mesh. Now, as you can see, what's actually happening is that it's calculating all of these different points or all of these different shapes and allowing it to give an average of what's going on for the whole structure. Now, we can actually refine this mesh. And we can go on over to Manage, Local Mesh Control. And we can make the mesh size even smaller. So if we were to make it a little finer. I don't want to do it too much because it's going to get out of control with trying to solve it. So you don't want to go too fine. We're going to click OK and we're going to regenerate the mesh and you're going to see how it looks different. So as you can see here, the shapes are a lot smaller. There's a lot more that could fit. So therefore, there's a lot more average that can occur along this plane. So all that's left is to just go ahead and solve the structure. So we're going to do that. You can solve it either locally or on the cloud. I'm just going to pick the cloud for simplistic sake, since most of you are going to be also using the cloud. And we're going to just click Solve. We have to save the project. And I will be back when it finishes solving so we can analyze the results. OK, so now, now that it's finished, we can go ahead and click Close. We can close this as well. And we can sort of check our work and make sure that what we did makes sense. So this isn't the actual deformation. This is just exaggerated. We can go ahead and click Actual here, and you can tell it's barely even deformed if it is any. So let's go ahead and check and see what our options are here. We have a safety factor, the stress, displacement, reaction forces, strain, and contact pressure. If we were to go ahead and click on stress, for example, you're going to be able to tell that majority of the stress is occurring along here. And you can see those red hot spots going on. And like we saw, the stress is basically nothing over here besides this very end point, probably because the force is occurring right at that point. But majority of the stress is occurring along this wall, which is what we expected. The stress is gradually getting more and more and maximizing itself over here. So this does make sense. This is the von Meissey stress. We can actually change this over to something that's a little more accurate. And as you can see here, we have the maximum stress occurring along this wall here. So that's just a quick run through of Fusion 360. Obviously, this can be a lot more advanced if we want it to be, changing the materials, making more advanced structures, generating finer meshes. And you can also calculate the handwritten work for a similar problem and compare it with the simulation results. But this is just a brief overview on how to make a simple cantilever beam with one force applied at the end and see how the stress impacts itself. And just why not? Let's look at displacement for a second. And you can see that the total displacement maximum is occurring here, which makes total sense since this is exactly where the force is, and this is where it's going to be deforming the most. You wouldn't really see any deformation at all over here, and we can tell it is set up with zero. So this whole sketch does make sense. 
And finally, my name is Jesse. Again, I'm a senior at the College of Staten Island. This was a example for the Applied Mechanics Laboratory with Professor Haber. And thank you for watching.